What are some 300 milliamp hour batteries you'd recommend? Any of the square cell batteries? By square cell batteries, I mean batteries that look like this. <clears throat> These are, they're more expensive, but they're, they're significantly better. So the square cell batteries are the ones, we kind of just have to know the brand. They have a particular look to them. You can't actually very easily see that look in this. Um, yeah. We bleed FPV, 1S LiPo batteries. This is a square cell battery. That's cute. That's really cute. Band-Aids tin lipo case. Really? It's literally just a Band-Aid tin. That's adorable. Um, <clears throat> let me show, let me see if I can find another one that isn't a square cell. The Nitro Nectar is also a square cell. Do you see that it has kind of sharp edges and it is folded over and back on itself? Whereas this one is what they call a pillow cell and you can't see it from the side. It's kind of like a puffy pillow. It doesn't have sharp edges. You want the square cell type. They're the best. The Beta FPV Lava is another one. It's a folded square cell, uh, and those are the best by, by, a, by a fair margin. Those are the ones you want. They're more expensive. There's no doubt. Wow, the lava is $22 for five pieces. That's actually way less expensive. That's uh, impressive. I think the tattoos are that price, right? Are they? Hard to imagine tattoo being budget. Three hundred mile one S seventy five C. That's a square cell, buddy. It's five bucks for one. Where is a? There's a pack. Twenty one bucks for five pieces. Oh well, shit. Hey, we bleed. What's going on? You're you're selling the same batteries as everybody else. We all know it. Right? <laughs> okay, well, now I'm no longer suspicious. Uh, but here's the thing. I would a thousand times buy the tattoos for the same price over the beta FPVs. Just because I always kind of side-eye beta FPV just a little bit. So, I'd just buy the tattoos then. How long should you practice in simulators before flying your first quad? There is no fixed number of hours, uh, but you should be able to fly around without crashing mostly. I don't mean that you can run through a race course. I just mean <clears throat> that you can take off and you can mostly be in control as you make a little circuit of the field. And then you can mostly sort of set the drone down or kind of not too violently crash it and disarm about where you intended to be. And maybe if there's a tree or a building in your way, you can get around it without just losing control. And not, and you can mostly control your altitude. If you can do that in the sim, then you're ready to fly in real life. No, you should not go to a busy park full of children and dogs and joggers and, 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 and you know, the, trees. No, you should go to a big empty field somewhere. Go to a soccer field on a day when no one's there and try and, and then take off and, and fly around and it'll probably be fine, right? But that's, that's, and for some people, that's an hour. And screw those people for being so good. And for some people, that's 10 hours or more. But if you can't do that basic maneuver where you just take off and you mostly fly in a, in a mostly straight line, mostly in control, and then you make a turn and you mostly stay in control while you turn, right? If you can't do that in the simulator, don't bother flying in real life. It's not going to go better for you, probably. Richard A., 
Thank you for a five dollar super chat. Two identical AOS five builds. One of them is smooth with the O3. The second has vibration at hover. Same parts, everything the same. Um, where's the vibration coming from? Do you have a motor that's out of spec? Like, for example, let me use this flight controller. I've been sorry. That was me. That boop boop was me. Um, if you're wondering if something plugged into your computer, you can go to the motors tab and here we have a gyro scale, right? Up here in the upper right. And what you do is you set your quadcopter on the table. I recommend that you get like a towel and you set it down on a towel just for a little bit of padding because having it right up against a hard desk can sometimes create vibration, rattling and stuff. Um, and what you do is, you uh, I understand the risks, the propellers are removed. Take your props off. You're going to plug a battery in. Take your props off. And then you're going to, one by one, raise the motor sliders. One by one, slowly. And, and even you can just use the up arrow. If you press the up arrow, you can pick a particular number. Like, we could go to 1,200, okay? So we're going to go up to 1,200. The motor's spinning bzzz, right now. There we go. We're right at 1,200 using the up arrow, okay? Motor's spinning. One motor. And look at the gyro, okay? In fact, hit reset. And what you're going to do is you're going to look at the... This number in parentheses, is the max, okay? So I'm going to reset that real quick. That's the max. And this number down here is the root mean square sort of average, if you will, of all of them. This should be about the same for all of your motors. So this one is about 0 0.5. Now, obviously, if I smack the desk like that, that's going to throw it off. So don't do that. Just reset. And what you're doing is you're measuring the vibration of your motors, okay? If, and you're going to do that one at a time for each of the motors. If one of the motors has like a wildly different, a wildly higher value, that's where the vibration's coming from. Swap that motor. So that's one approach to trying to solve this problem. If the, all the motors are about the same. And by the way, compare the vibration quad motors to the smooth quads motors, right? Just because the motors are brand new doesn't mean they're perfect. So I would try to rule that out. My Crossfire module isn't working in the boxer. All my ELRS modules work no problem. Okay, so uh, if the Crossfire module doesn't even light up, then it's not getting power, right? If the ELRS modules work, then, like, are, are you literally, are you switching models? Because if you're switching models, the new model could have the external module turned off. But assuming you haven't done anything other than take the ELRS module out and put the Crossfire module in, and the Crossfire module doesn't power up, the thing I would guess is that the pins are misaligned. So the pins in the module bay Depending on the module, sometimes they will go slightly to the side of the socket, and the module will still seat in, but the pins didn't actually go in the hole. They went to the slide of the hole. I think we've all been there, fellas. Uh, <laughs> and uh, that could be what's happening. How should I bend them? I, I don't know, man. It's, it's a crapshoot. You got to kind of figure out, you know, which way they're... You know what you could do? You know what you could do? Open up the Crossfire module case, take the back cover off the case, and you'll be able to look down into the module and see where the pins are going. There you go. That's what you could do. I mean, it's either that or the module's dead, right? Like the, somehow the power, yeah. the five volt is not getting from those pins to the MC. Pretty much, yeah. Pretty much, yeah. And I've had trouble seating my Crossfire module in my boxer. I think there is a small uh, bit of 
deviation in the tolerances of how they're manufactured. All my Express LRS modules fit no problem, but Crossfire module is tight in the boxer. So I think that it's plausible that you're missing the hole. 